This is Brant from Farmers Business Network. I'm on the Gradable team here. And uh, today we are going to be chatting for a few minutes with Matt Meisner, um, who's our VP of Research and Development here at FBN. Um, and what we really want to unpack is soil. Um, so we just launched Gradable Plan here at FBN, um, which is a new soil sampling and fertilizer recommendation service. Um, and really, it's FBN's first jump into soil and soil health and trying to unpack uh, what this means and what you can do with it um, if you aggregate a large data set related to soil. Um, so I want to get Matt here to talk a little bit about the potential of this. Uh, so Matt, you want to give a quick intro of, in, in your experience here at FBN? Yeah, for sure. Uh, thanks, Brent. Thanks for joining yeah, my name is Matt. I lead our data science and our R&D teams here at FBN. So basically all the data we're pulling in from farmer data, you know, machine data, weather data, soil data, satellite data, weather stations, anything you can, we can get our hands on, you know, to help better understand what's going on on a farm. Uh, our team is the, the one that's trying to, trying to make sense of all of that. So yeah, look forward to chatting about what we uh, have in mind here and some of the things we'll be able to do with more, more and better soil data down the road. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think uh, anybody that's been around with FBN and involved with FBN for a while knows that we've done a lot to apply data science to seed and done, have done a lot of really cool things. We've done um, applied data science to things like the economics and, and uh, chemical and, and other different inputs that on your farms. Uh, and really now we're, now we're jumping into soil. So, so Matt, can you maybe unpack a little bit about uh, soil health and, and why you see it as important um, and, and why, it's an, why it's an important thing for farmers to consider as they're you know, figuring out how much fertilizer to put onto their farm? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think the, there's a couple of different reasons, right? I mean, obviously all of these really boil down to profitability in the long run, which is always what we're trying to optimize with our, our analytics at FBN, really what's going to help help you on your farm make the decisions that that are going to maximize your your long-term profitability now a couple of different ways that can come into play right i think first of all uh is input costs right we know fertilizer costs especially right now are, are quite high um it's probably not probably not likely to change anytime soon and uh that means um finding ways that you can potentially produce a crop and and uh, maximize profitability by reducing Fertilizer are, are definitely interesting purely from just a you know PL perspective, right? How can we drive down input costs and, and make a greater margin per acre? And some of the things that are coming down the pipeline longer term, I think are are important as well in the in the in the long haul, right? So if you think about we know there's increasing regulatory pressure on fertilizer use, you know, we as we all know that that's not gonna probably trend back the other direction, right? It's what's gonna only keep getting getting uh, getting more more extensive and getting our practices you know adapted to a point where the the negative impact of that can be mitigated um, in terms of farm decision making is 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 going to be in the best interest for everybody and uh, and there's also profitability potential in terms of premium programs right Gradable's working on a whole bunch of interesting stuff on nutrient use efficiency you know synthetic fertilizer is is one of the biggest drivers of emissions. Um, from the farm, uh, you know, producing synthetic nitrogen, for example, is one of the, actually one of the larger emission sources um, globally, counts for a couple percent of global emissions. So it's like, things are, things are you know, big enough uh, prizes to go after that people care about them and uh, companies and governments potentially are willing to, to pay growers extra for being more efficient with synthetic fertilizer. So obviously, you know, brand can comment more on exactly how those programs are gonna evolve, but, uh, Certainly things we're optimistic about in the long run and we view as the, the value in developing tools and analytics and recommendations that can help increase fertilizer use efficiency are only going to become more and more lucrative um, as we as we go forward. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of think of it as, you know, as farmers are thinking about their fertility programs, there's they, they've got two options, right, or two deals on the table, right, do I want to uh, put too much fertilizer on really max out yield, but maybe hurt my soil long term um which, and, and then you're always playing catch up um, from a fertilizer perspective uh or or kind of new way of thinking or maybe it's it's getting a second wind here of 
of uh, a nutrition plan that, that is more holistic and thinks about your soil health and uh, works to introduce a biological or cover crop so that you're you're unlocking those nutrients that are already in your soil. Um, and then over time, you're, you're actually reducing your fertilizer use without having to yield hit. So I think that's what farmers have to weigh, especially in this market environment is, you know, am I going to uh, go, go for max yield um, or am I going to try to uh, focus on soil health and, and, and kind of plan for the longer term? And, you know, that's a big focus of Gradable Plan. And we're hoping that, you know, by, by kind of plugging in data science to this concept, uh, we'll, we'll be able to do a lot of cool things. So, so Matt, can you maybe speak to that of, you know, if you, if you could, if you had a large data set of soil, um, right, and, and um, all the nutrients in soil, uh, which is something that we, we hope to build up through Gradable Plan, uh, what are some things that we can do with that? And, and then also, what are some things that FBN is already doing uh, to, to try to understand ROI of um, some of these soil health initiatives that are out there? Yeah, uh, totally. So I think on the, you know, from the perspective of what you could do, right? I mean, if you imagine having really good soil sampling data from, you know, many, many growers over many years, which we're obviously now in the process of, of aggregating, right? I mean, there's, that's going to add a huge layer of nuance and, and just additional value to the layers of data we already have, right? Having data on seeding rates and variety selection, yields, input use, fertilizer use, things like that. Um, is really good, but you know, the context is different depending on the soil, right? Adding 200 pounds of nitrogen means something very different. If your, your starting nutrient level is pretty good versus if your starting nutrient level is, is really low. So I think it just will make all of our analytics on input use significantly richer, right? And, and, and give you the ability to filter down to your unique conditions, right? If you know, you have soils that are high pH or little trending lower in organic matter or whatever it might be. You know, if we have that data, then we can provide even more localized, personalized insights that, you know, given your, given your pH levels in your soil, here's the hybrids that are likely a really good fit, right? Or, or any number of similar related questions. So that's what I'm really excited about as we, as we build up this data set more. I think there's a ton of potential. In terms of things we're doing today, uh, you know, we already are developing uh, some really interesting analytics around cover crop uh, ROI and quantifying how cover crops in certain areas could potentially be beneficial in terms of uh, in increasing nutrient retention, you know, reducing soil erosion, things like that, ultimately increasing, you know, resilience to, to weather extremes. So we got some really interesting work going on there. The other part of this is our biological initiatives. So we, you know, I think like many people are cautiously optimistic about the potential for biologicals, but at the same time, uh, really wanting to see the data on how these products work, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hot space. A lot of money, a lot of startups, a lot of, lot of investment, a lot of hype. Um, probably a lot of good products, but it's hard to know. And we want to really figure out which of these products are good, which are less successful for the ones that are successful. Where, when, how are they successful? Right? What are the regions and practices that make them successful? And to that end. As some of you, I'm sure, are already aware, some of you may even be participating in the trials, we're running a, a large on-farm biological R&D initiative this year where we're taking products that have been promising in the lab or the greenhouse or small plot research and really validating performance at realistic field scale, right? So taking products that work well in a research farm, which is great, but seeing how they work in a real farm, right? Do they work in your soil types, real equipment, real field variability, you know? not perfectly managed conditions because it's real world, right? Like basically validating tech in the, in the real world. So we got about 20 different products we're testing this year on uh, these large scale trials. You know, these aren't small plot research. This is like, you know, field scale studies um, to really, really validate performance at a, at, a, at a commercially relevant scale. So we're super excited about that, right? Biologicals are one tool in the toolkit that may help with uh, with soil health, may help with nutrient use efficiency, um, but the data's got to back it up, right? We can't just uh, can't just take products that are that seem good, right? We got to know they're good based on the data, and that's really what we're committed to doing, and that's why we're launching this program so we get the data on the performance, and then can can make uh, transparent decisions about which ones to uh, to promote and where to where to place them um, in a very data driven way. That's great. That's great. So, so yeah, that's, uh, as you can tell, we're just getting started here. This is uh, kind of FBN's deep dive into soil 
uh, through Gradable Plan. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in, in being a part of Gradable Plan, uh, it's a it's a multi-year uh, soil sampling and fertilizer recommendation service. So we'll come out and uh, we partner with with independent agronomists. We'll come out and pull samples uh, on your fields. Uh, we will then return to you those soil sample results. We will return to you fertilizer recommendations, um, including things like cover crops and biologicals. Um, today, all of this is powered by by agronomists. Um, and our hope over time as we build up this data set that we've been talking about, um, we'll be able to find uh, even more insights and provide even, even more recommendations that uh, help your farm be more profitable. Um, so if you're interested in Gradable Plan, uh, definitely check us out. And uh, thank you, Matt, for your time. And uh, yeah, take care.